We've got details of these and many more coming up in the next 20 minutes if you spend your time with me. Remember, we are live on DSTV channel 279. Let's begin from the Electoral Commission because the Commission is warning against the registration of minors and foreigners ahead of its planned limited voter registration exercise starting today. The 21-day exercise, according to the Commission, is expected to register more than 600,000 new voters ahead of the December polls. The exercise aims at individuals who have turned 18 years since the last registration on the electoral roll ahead of the December 7 general elections. The exercise will be conducted at eight district offices and in difficult to access electoral areas. The registration, which will be for 21 days, will be undertaken in all 268 district offices of the Electoral Commission across the country. Additionally, the Commission, in collaboration with its stakeholders, including the political parties, has identified 785 unwieldy electoral areas where registration will take place. These refer to reverend areas and communities which find it difficult to access our district offices as a result of distance. We have also selected 25 public universities where registration will take place. The 25 universities have been chosen due to the fact that they have high, a high number of persons on the campus who are resident on the campus. The EC Church and Mensa spelled out the eligibility criteria for the exercise. Only Ghanaians 18 years and above who are of sound mind and who have not previously registered can register to vote. Eligible voters must be resident or ordinarily resident in the district where they intend to vote. The documents required for registration are either the Ghana passport or the Ghana card, that is the national identification card issued by the National Identification Authority. Voters, eligible voters who do not possess any of the above documents are required by law to visit the uh, district officers in the district where they reside with two guarantors. And these two guarantors must be persons who are already registered voters to vouch for their citizenship and age. Well, let's just stay with the Electoral Commission because the Opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, has warned against any attempt by the Electoral Commission to cite network challenges to deliberately frustrate the limited voter registration in the party strongholds. According to the Northern Regional Secretary of the Party, Mohamed Salam, any such attempt will be fiercely resisted. The limited voter registration exercise is scheduled to begin on Tuesday, May 7 and end on May 27. Even before the start of the process, members of the opposition NDC have begun raising concerns. You need 50% plus one single vote to win an election. So for 67%, a whooping 67% of Ghanaians to indicate their distrust in the election commission, that is an institution that is buried in terms of confidence level. In the Savulugu constituency, the party is cautioning the EC to uphold its integrity and not to succumb to alleged plans of the MPP to register minors. Those plans, plans are messing up. We are aware we shall not allow them to go to those particular plans. For we are wise, we are enlightened, we are matured, and we can decipher between what is good and wrong, and we know our left from our right. Northern Regional Secretary of the Party, Mohamed Salam, wants the EC to be opened in instances where they want to switch to manual registration to avoid confusion at registration centers. What we are worried about is situations where you get to the center and then they will tell you because of data issues or network issues, the machines are not functioning. And at the end of the day, you equally have to transport these people back to where they are coming from and you having to bring them back the next day. So we are saying that let the EC be clear in determining at what point must the registration machine be switched offline. Should it be 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes after we have recognized that the network is not functioning? 
Meanwhile, the Electoral Commission chairperson has been speaking to the media about the Imani Ghana petition to Yoko and Shraj to investigate the commission. We are yet to receive the petition. I believe you mentioned that it had been sent to Shraj. I think the EC has always maintained that the kids were disposed as a, report, as a, as a result of reports that we had before us. In 2018, when we took, assumed the position as, as the, exec, the commission, we had before us some correspondence from the original equipment manufacturers, as well, that is the HSB Identification Limited, and then the managers of our biometric infrastructure, that is STL, to the effect that our kits were obsolete and they mentioned that the equipment had reached end of life, which means that there were no parts available to service them. We had before us a notification for the award of a contract to refurbish those kits to the amount of 56 million United States dollars. So the question was whether to use that 56 million to refurbish obsolete kits or whether to use it to procure new kits. Interestingly, if you look at the, 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 the budgets, the cost of refurbishing a biometric verification kit was more expensive than procuring a new one. And the commission, to enable it to arrive at this decision, invited a UNDP Canadian consultant who had advised the commission in 2011 when the decision was taken to go biometric. He was the one who came and put in place our biometric architecture. And then he supervised the procurement and everything. And so when we assumed office in 2018 and we were confronted as to whether to spend $56 million to refurbish kits that were obsolete, we invited him in and he spent some 10 days with us. And he, at the end of the day, noted that the kits were obsolete and the maintenance of them had reached unsustainable levels. That, with that before us, we then took the decision to procure a brand new biometric voter management system for the commission. Well, away from election-related issues, the Economic and Organized Crime Office, Yoko, plans to return the docket it received from the Office of the Special Prosecutor on Cecilia Dapa. The Executive Director, C.O.P. Mamiya Adudankwa, stated that despite requesting additional information from the OSP, Yoko has not received any response. The Office of the Special Prosecutor commenced investigations into the Cecilia Dapa stashed cash case following reports that huge sums of money had been stolen from her residence. The investigations were later referred to the Economic and Organized Crime Office after the OSP concluded that the case had to do with money laundering which does not fall within its mandate. The Office of the Attorney General in a recent opinion described the referral as lacking basis since the OSP failed to point to any unlawful activity undertaken by the former sanitation minister Cecilia Abinadapa. Executive Director of IYOKO, Mamiya Tiwa Adudankwa, explains her office asked for directions from the Attorney General because the OSP failed to provide additional information. When the docket was referred to us, you mean um, Madam Cecilia Adapa's case, the docket was referred to us because in the opinion of the um, special prosecutor, it borders on money laundering. We requested for the basis of the SP coming out with that conclusion. That enabled him to say that we should continue. We requested for that, we didn't do, we didn't get, maybe as at now, we haven't received any response. And we sat down to review the whole docket. At the end of the day, we realized that we couldn't find our way clear. Most of the time, when you finish your docket, you can send it to Attorney General's office for advice. But this is not something that we send for advice because we couldn't even find our way. We didn't see our way clearer. So we wanted the Attorney General to look at what we've done and direct as to the way forward. Remember, before the docket was referred to us, 
the source of the uh, money had already been referred to the criminal investigation department. The attorney general had directed the CID to look at the source of the, uh, the money. So having reviewed the document that we received from ASP, we, could, we didn't see any offense, predicate offense, from which we'll proceed our investigation on. So we requested direction from the office of the attorney general. She adds that the docket will be returned to the OSP. You need evidence to prove criminal offense. It's not about people saying it. Saying that somebody is corrupt, somebody is, there's so much corruption, that one doesn't solve any problem. Whatever that we would have done had already been directed at the CID to do. We cannot continue to be doing fishing. It's like we don't even know what we are looking for. You just go about looking for something that you yourself, you are not even sure. So what I'm going to do is that with the AG's advice, I will send the docket that we receive from the OSP to him that there's nothing for us to do. Meanwhile, Ma uh, legal practitioner Martin Pigbo is of the view that the Attorney General is largely to blame for what he describes as a grand plan to free the former sanitation minister, Cecilia Abenadapa. Hmm. Number one, the Attorney General now, the Attorney General is even contradicting Mamikiwa. On Saturday, on news file, after we're done with key points, hmm. I, I mean, play that news file. And you hear the Attorney General saying that Mamichua had concluded the investigations and found nothing. That's what Attorney General said. Meanwhile, Mamichua, as Adibankwa Yoko boss, had rather written for uh, further instructions. And that same letter had said that she could comment. She could comment if uh, she could comment, but it was unnecessary. So this showed that she hadn't finished any investigation, but the Attorney General maintained that Mamichua had finished. Mm. And there was nothing, which is false. Godfrey Dami says the source of the money is what is in the cash sheet, that mm. that information had always been around since day one. So now that Godfrey Dami says that is the source of the money, the question is, well, then what is the CID doing investigating that matter? What is the CID doing? So you see that it's a charade, a complete charade. Mm. The Attorney General is part of the conspiracy to just free Madame Dapa. Well, if you're just tuning in, you're watching the first news bulletin of the day on TV3 right here on New Day. In more news this morning, corruption-related activities is estimated at $2.6 trillion annually, while $1 trillion is paid as bribes globally. Anti-corruption agencies warn the situation needs immediate attention to ensure socioeconomic development in developing countries. The heads of anti-corruption agencies and institutions in the Commonwealth are convening in Accra to discuss and learn best practices for combating corruption. Head of Public Sector Governance at the Commonwealth Secretariat, Dr. Roja Opong, emphasized the need for strengthening anti-corruption agencies across different countries to combat corruption. We bring all this, the best, the worst and the ugly together to share experience so that those who are doing better will show those who are doing the worst things. The fact of the matter is that strengthen your institutions and corruption will go there. Executive Director of the Economic and Organized Crime Office, Iyoku, COP Mamiya Tiwa Adudankwa, is of the view that corruption conferences would empower anti-corruption agencies. You look at Mauritius, you look at Seychelles, you look at Luanda. What is it that they've been doing? And they are all here. We are going to share experiences, share our challenges and share our successes too. Um, when you talk about um, Ghana being stagnant, you realize that it is a corruption perception in this. Some of them are here to give a lecture on what are the things that they use as a matter of coming out with some of these things. What is it that we are not doing or what is it that they are also not capturing? Assistant Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Professor Louise Francesi, emphasized the detrimental impacts of corruption on development and urged leaders to commit to combating it. The global cost of corruption is $3.6 trillion a year in the world. And of course, you can never explain how could 40% of the minerals of the world be in Africa and so much potential, so much energy and so many young people. And then we are practically negligible when it comes to the big economy in the world and GDP and, and income and development. When
And that was my colleague, Evelyn Timmer, coming through with that corruption story there. And away from that, the General Secretary of NAT, Thomas Musatanko, is predicting more agitations by pre tertiary teachers by the end of this week of a government's failure to implement the agreed conditions of service for teachers. Educational outcomes will therefore be teacher centered. And this statement, we must remind government we have not forgotten. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2016, 2017, thereabout, we have been giving 100 Ghana CDs every month. Sure. For the past eight years, 100 Ghana CDs a month. And now 100 Ghana CDs, the goods and services that you can buy. If that money started, the payment started in 2020, the goods and services that money can buy, the 100 Ghana CDs in those days, it's like 40 Ghana CDs today. And I can tell you, the teachers in this country are not happy they are agitating and they are determined to make sure that what must be given to them will have to be given. They have been deceived for a very long time and they are saying never again should they be deceived. We have already sounded the alarm bell. Now whatever happens, the union leaders cannot be blamed. Well, let's know what you make of stories that have been aired so far. Just go to our social media platform, CV3 Ghana. We have live on Facebook and engage us with your comments, observations and opinions and we'll surely read them and share them to the rest of the world. And now the sanitation condition at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle in Accra has worsened after Monday's downpour deposited plastic waste from the Odor River into the street. Thousands of cabbage along the roads in the area affected human and vehicular movement. Here's a report from my colleague Christian Yali. Residents in the capital have long complained about garbage in drainage systems. A major contributor to floods as the Odor River overflowed its banks and poured out garbage. The cycle interchange was obstructed by waste, posing a significant challenge for motorists to navigate the roads. The indiscriminate dumping of refuse or rubbish into waterways, into gutters, and to drainage systems, you know, is to blame for some of these things that we are talking about today. Many are calling for residents for citizens to change their attitudes towards saving the environment. When it rains and it floods, it's unbearable. The stench, the refuse, the damp, they said they would distill this place. They never did. It is not healthy for the people around this vicinity. When you look at such a situation, it's taking a lot of people into the grave. In 2019, the government announced plans to redevelop the Kuala Lagoon and Odor River Basin to combat flooding and beautify the area. But the area still contains high levels of salt and debris, posing potential health risks. At her wedding in March this year, the sanitation minister nominee, Lydia Seira Malhassan, stated that new measures are being rolled out to clean the city and called for a shift in attitude. Provisions have been made, all the infrastructure investments have been made. What we have is attitudinal, the, the persons, to ensure that we keep our environment, our workplaces, the market, wherever we find ourselves. Meanwhile, the Minister of Works and Housing has ordered contractors on the Accra Resilient and Integrated Development Project to expedite work to reduce flood risks in the capital during the upcoming rainy season. Christian Yale, TV3 News, Kwame Nkrumah Interchange, Accra. Well, on that sanitation note, we end the morning news. For more news updates, just log on to our website. It's 3news.com. Thanks for watching. It's always a pleasure coming your way. My colleagues are standing by to continue with the morning show. Enjoy morning.